Deborah, really nice having you here. It's a uh, pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, you know for uh, uh, giving us this this time of your stay in Granada and your generosity. We really appreciate it. I'm very honored to be asked, and I've had a lovely time here. So okay. this is great for me. Thank you. Uh, Deborah, what was your motivation for wanting to prove your Spanish? Well, I, I knew a little bit of Spanish from years and years ago when I fell in love with Spain when I was, was 20 and came over here um, on an invitation from mm -hmm. a lady I didn't know and ended up spending three months in, in Madrid. And that was such an experience for me. I fell in love with Spain. I fell in love with the Spanish people. I fell in love with the idea that the world was so much bigger than my little town where I grew up and it engendered a, a lifelong love of travel and experience and learning, especially about people and cultures. And But Spanish has always been um, my, first, my first second language um, <laughs> that I fell in love with and I just wanted to get better at it. Okay, and what made you choose Granada and the Centro de Lenguas Modernas? And how did you find out about, about us? Well, I, I have a young lady who teaches me online in the United States, and she has some friends with affiliation to Granada and CLM, and she recommended that I look into it and that it would really be a great intensive program for me, which is what I was looking for. And I had not been to the south of Spain. I've been to Madrid and north, and I've always wanted to come. And I used to be a horseback rider years ago and yeah. rode Andalusian horses. And um, so I was. I looked it up. It looked perfect. I was accepted, which I mean, I'm, I assume anyone that wants to come in the summer for the mm -hmm. intensive programs is accepted. And um, and before I could lose my courage, I rented an apartment. Paid the tuition and here I am. Good. Yeah, with the horses you need to go to Jerez to see the, uh, right, right. All the uh, Andalusian horses dance. Right, right. <laughs> okay, and what was your level of Spanish when you came to Granada? And what level uh, are, are you reaching at, at the end? At I tested, I tested into level five out of nine. And so, you know, intermediate, but I would say, and I was talking with one of my professors earlier, and she said, no, you're a, you're a high six now. So, and some things that I know from my experience mm -hmm. with my teacher in the in, um, United States is probably a, a seven. And so I have advanced a lot. And, and what really helps being here is listening to people talk and how you can learn vocabulary, you can mm -hmm. learn grammar, but it doesn't live in your head until you have heard people communicate with the words you know and in the in the grammar you know spots that you know and that's what really this this helps with obviously you learn grammar you learn vocabulary you learn all the things that you want to know but just understanding how to communicate mm -hmm. it becomes a living language not just some rote memorization you know that you do at home or whatever when you don't have native spanish speakers which is what we actually call, you know, real communication. Right, right, right. right. Okay. And what, what do you think of your teachers and classmates? Oh, they've been lovely. Um, the teachers have been amazing. They're energetic. You can tell they really want you to, to improve and learn, mm -hmm. and they want to help you how to do that. They're always available. Um, the classes go by so fast. It just, <laughs> you know, really, and you're, I mean, the first couple of weeks I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not used to this, and um, but what has also been really fun is to be with, since I'm older, uh, and being with with people who are much younger than me, and I mean, they're twice the age of my son. I mean, they're half the age of my son. My son is twice as old as him. And so I don't get to, to be around people that age um, very often, and that has provided energy and insight, and you know, I'm a writer, so um, listening to what they, they think about, how they think about it, what they think about the world, mm -hmm. what their hopes and dreams are, you know, and I go back and I think, I was never that young. I don't even remember being that yeah. young, but um, and th they're so much further ahead than I was at their age, that's for sure. Uh, what skills or knowledge acquired at CLM do you think can help you in your uh, literary uh, career? 
Well, I, you know, I, I don't think that in my in my life I have enough time to get good enough at Spanish <laughs> to write something in Spanish, but like a novel. Yeah. But um, what it what Spanish is it's just like writing a novel, really. As we were talking about before, they're both puzzles, mm -hmm. and and so you have to learn the logic of of Spanish or the illogic of mm -hmm. it at some point at some, in some point. And so it's like putting together a big puzzle, and then you have to say, okay, how do I, how do I put together this sentence? I know how I would say it in English, but how would they say it in Spain? Mm -hmm. And so it's a whole different puzzle. And so I think it helps my puzzle solving skills, which helps with my writing, but also um, being here and being in a different culture, meeting different people with different ideas, different approaches to life. Whatever that is, all grist for the mill. As a writer, I can meet somebody who's Spanish. I can put a Spanish person in my book. I can have someone with Spanish sensibilities in my book, or I can take some of the mannerisms or some of the thoughts or or whatever from people I meet here and incorporate that into characters as you know as I go forward. It's all you know whatever goes in my head eventually gets mushed around and mixed up and comes out you know in my story. So it's all really great. Because, you can't sit yeah. at home and not have any experience and think you're going to write, mm -hmm. a, you know, a really good story that is relevant to the world outside your mm -hmm. door. That's right. You know, That's so right. you got to go live in the world. Mm -hmm. and so. Because it's a matter of culture, not only language, because language is also culture. Sure. And, and I understand what you mean. Yeah, I agree. And it's too. people and how, like you said, how you express yourself and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. It's, it's all, as, as a writer, we, we, you know, we look at people, we listen, we watch, we pay attention. Mm -hmm. We we recognize mannerisms. We see how what they do, you know, and it's it's all in here. And then we pull it out later when it's like, okay, I need this character to do mm -hmm. something, you know. Oh, that guy I met, he made origami okay. or whatever, you know. Yeah, and yeah. you and you put it in there. Yeah. But if I never met the man who made origami, I might not have thought of that. That's right. That's so, right. Okay, uh, do you remember any particular moment at CLM that was especially relevant or anecdotal? I think for me, it's, it was my fear coming in here being not the typical student, um, not sort of in the flow of a university setting, and, and then how friendly the teachers were, how accepting the teachers were and how comfortable every may, everybody made me feel mm -hmm. so that I wasn't nervous in class knowing that I would say something that was grammatically incorrect or, or yeah. whatever, but I wasn't nervous to try. Mm -hmm. And and they're very gracious about mm -hmm. how they correct you and they were like, do you want me to correct you? I was like, well, how am I going to learn if you yeah, don't, you know, if you don't yeah. correct me? <laughs> and so, but it, it really was just the, the friendliness and the acceptance. Everybody here talks to you when you walk in and, and you know, I just, I just think that created such a good learning environment mm -hmm. because all of that, that nervousness and that imposter syndrome and all of that stuff just fell away and we were all just here trying to do the same thing. That was probably, Learn probably Spanish. the first step mm -hmm. for, you know, for success. Yeah, yeah, oh, totally. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, what are the best memories of, of Granada that you are taking home with you? Oh, Granada. Oh, what a fabulous city. <laughs> what a fabulous city. I had no idea. No, no idea. You mean beforehand? Uh, no, I, yeah, I, I really, people told me I needed to go to Granada, I needed to go to CLM, and so I was like, okay, I'll go. But I didn't sit down and go, oh, is Granada a place that I'm really going to like? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? I mean, I knew there was a big hill, so I like to exercise. So I thought, well, I can run up and down the big hill. And I knew the Alhambra was here. <laughs> but other than that, you know, I really didn't know any anything about it. And what I really like is the sense, the strong sense of pride and culture and history here. And, and yet the town is so small that you can feel like it's not so, so small, but it's, it's big enough, but it's small enough that you feel like you can sort of get your head around it, you know, and I walk a lot. And so I've walked through all the neighborhoods and up and down many hills and <laughs> looked at all the different kinds of houses and, you know, and all that kind of thing. And it's just, it, it perfectly fits and supports what, what I was hoping to accomplish when I came here. And, you know, in Madrid, I, I would feel like I would be a little bit lost, uh -huh. you know, and I wouldn't, 
here I walk into a store, I just start talking to people, you know, in Madrid, I'm not sure I would do that, you know, but and people will talk, me, yeah. talk back to me, you know, yes. and, and so. Uh, you know what happens to big cities uh, yeah, around yeah. the world, and yeah, I think. It's impersonal. I, uh, yes, I, I have the feeling, I've always had the feeling that uh, people are nice in, uh, nicer in a smaller uh, they are. The settings. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. Sometimes they, they, it's funny, because I can tell that people here aren't, super used to having a lot of English speaking people all the time, especially if you wander away from the center. Mm -hmm. And you can tell if somebody really wants to talk to you, you know, the look on their face when you start talking to them and they know that you're not <laughs> from Granada. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, it's okay, it's okay. 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 Granada, Andalusia, Spain in general, as a possible setting for one of your uh, like your two uh, novels. <laughs> or is we it Las Vegas? Well, it's true, it's true, it's true. That's all the key. Take place in the, well, all of Lucky Books take place in some yeah. place that has gambling, like Macau or mm -hmm. Paris or, or someplace. But, um, you know, I was thinking about that. And there's definitely going to be some characters that come from Granada <laughs> yeah. or, you know, Okay. Can you imagine a whole group of uh, older ladies from Granada traveling to Las Vegas? That would be funny. Yeah, it, it casinos, could be really funny. In one of the casinos, yeah, yeah it could be that really would funny. be very funny. Yeah. Those are the mm -hmm. situations that, uh, you know, yeah. uh, provoke the uh, people's, uh, you know, uh, Make them giggle, yeah, yeah, yeah. make them see something else, it's something in themselves, it's, too. It's so absurd, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that mm -hmm. it would be funny, yeah. So it could be fun. It could be fun. Okay. Would you recommend CLM to any prospective student uh, of Spanish who ask uh, for, you know, uh, advice? Oh, I would recommend it to everyone. Yeah, no, it's been amazing. It has been exactly what I was looking for. Super comfortable, super confident, super intensive, mm -hmm. but in a way that it really helps you learn, mm -hmm. not that it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't recommend it more highly. It's it's been a super experience. Just yeah. great. Deborah, thank you so much. I really uh, appreciate this. Uh, not only the interview, but the moment. It was really nice meeting you. I having the chance to uh, to talk to you. Uh, and uh, we'll be in touch for sure. Likewise, it's been a special moment for me. Thank you okay. so much, and for allowing me to to uh, talk about CLM. Thank you, and thank you. And we have to, uh, you know, have you back. You know, CLM is now your uh, second home. That's right. I'll be back. Maybe I'll be at level 8 next time. You will, you will. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's, it's, you, you, it's what you said before, you need, to, you need to concentrate and just think about but it. But I always, I mean, the way I learned was I didn't watch TV, I didn't, when my son was sleeping, I would write, you know, okay. and I would figure out the story. How, and it would be terrible, you know, when you first start, it's just horrible. Yeah. I go back and read it and go, oh my God. I, I have the same feeling. Yeah, yeah. And you get, uh, <laughs> you get better. But you know what? That's <laughs> a, pro you probably agree with me that it's similar to when uh, you are learning a language. Yeah, oh, I would say so. Yes, the, 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 the more you get into it, uh, you feel that you are improving, but you, you feel that you are doing worse, and it's more and more, mm -hmm. and it becomes more and more difficult to, mm -hmm. to, to improve. Right. You know? And then you go back to the past, like you said, and you and you look at the how you uh, wrote in English or whatever in my case or in Spanish. My, I wouldn't do it this way right, right now. Right. Yeah. I was I was looking on. Um, oh, I was looking through some files on my computer, and I, I have a friend who is a very good writer. And mm -hmm. every now and then she'll send me some little essay or some little thing that she's written. She's a novelist okay. as well, but and I'll save them because they're very good, you know. And I pulled one up and I went, wow. That is, that is, I want to write like that. That is really good. But you know what? It was an essay of mine you that see? I had forgotten, but that, that I had written. That, that <laughs> happened, yeah. You, but, but that's good. And you, 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 you always feel, uh, you probably... Uh, it's imposter syndrome. Do you have that here? What, what? Imposter syndrome. It's where you feel like you're yeah. trying to do something that you don't have the talent for. And everybody else is smarter than you are in that That's thing. how you feel. That's, that's how, how you feel. feel. Do I, I, that's what I mean. And exactly. so you feel like, oh my God, that's you know, people are going to laugh at me, or why yes. am I trying to do this? And I, I think they write, you know, great and everything, but I have, I want to have my own style. Well, people will ask me all the time, do I need to go to college to learn how? Do I need to go take a course? Do I need to get a? We have an MFA, Master's of yeah, Fine a, Arts. Yeah, a lot of, in, a lot of uh, manuals about and, that. Yeah, too. and I said no. 
I said, the only thing, you need to learn sort of the basics of writing the story, how, and that's more important because the reader actually has expectations wow. of how the story is going to be presented, yeah. and not necessarily in a formula, but they have needs that they want met. Yeah. And then after that, you need to don't do, you do your own thing? Yeah, I think you so. know because that's all you bring to writing is your unique voice, right? right. There's if, nothing else, right? If you are if you are imitating somebody else, the, the the original will win. Right, right. Yeah, I agree and with so you. So you have to bring your own way of telling the story, your own ideas, and your own words. The the pattern of your word, your voice is mm -hmm. what we call it, and yeah. so. Um, I'm sure you call it the same here. Yeah, yeah. Google. Well, yeah. but it's, I think, and one of the things that um, CLM does is, as, as you're explaining it to me, and I've experienced a little bit of it, is it's not just about learning the language. It's about learning what language does and all the uses of the language and how we use language and how you communicate how we communicate our stories, mm -hmm. how we communicate our past. I mean, if you think about it, our history as humans was was nothing but oral storytelling for a long time. That's right. And so it's very important, and we've lost sight of that. Mm -hmm. I think in the digital world, we don't work on how to communicate. We don't work on how to write. Half of the college kids that I see have no idea how to write yeah. anything, you know, and and that's so important. I, I agree with you. And they they get held back in business. They have to learn those skills mm -hmm. which they should have had from mm -hmm. you know from because, the beginning. Because that that tells a lot about your basics, about how you are. If you don't if you don't put enough care into you know writing into how you speak, that that gives a, a an awful image of what you are representable to are, don't you think so? Eva? I think so, sure. And then you have a hard time communicating with somebody else your thoughts, your desires, mm -hmm. your, you know, whatever. Okay. And so that makes it hard, right? Yeah. Because then you don't have that that ability to create a community, to create understanding mm -hmm. and people that you work with or you live with or, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. very difficult. Yeah. And but we don't we don't teach our kids that anymore. Yeah, all right. uh, I always say that uh, reading and traveling is what makes you uh, get away from that and seeing the, the wall. Uh, but that's, that's, that's one of the things that started me with Spanish. Mm -hmm. When I was 20 years old, I graduated from college. An aunt of a friend of mine uh, lived in Madrid. Uh -huh. And she said, well, why don't you come? You can rent a room in my apartment and you can live in Madrid for three months. And, and you did And it. I did. And I was like, okay, let's do that. So this is not your actually your first Spanish experience? No, yeah. no. And But this was 45 yeah. years ago. Yeah, Spain was totally and different. It, it was just after Franco. After and, Franco. And, um, and so I came to Madrid. I mean, you know, young, so young, and no experience, and nobody spoke, not English. one word of English, of English, not one, and I mean, I could ask, um, I could ask where was the bathroom, I could say yes and no, I could ask for a beer, and I could ask for another beer, and I could ask for a hug, <laughs> and that was it, <laughs> that was as far as I could go, and um, it was the most profoundly changing Experience. experience that I've ever had you know I was pushed way out of my comfort zone and I mean it was I mean I walked around I'm sure with my eyes just you know like yeah, this yeah. and but I picked up enough Spanish probably really bad Spanish but enough Spanish fairly quickly to you know, at least buy food mm -hmm. and um, and I was just I was never the same after mm -hmm. that I was like There's a whole world out there yeah. that isn't like Texas, mm -hmm. and and you know the United States is great, but it doesn't mean it's the best in mm -hmm. everything. Or, and the, or a, the only one. Or the well, for sure not the, the only, only one. one. Yeah. And um, and I just and that's that's the whole Spanish thing, you know. And I started learning Spanish then, and it had always has had a place in my heart just because of it was such a big changing experience for me and the people in. Madrid were, even though they didn't like Americans at the time at all, they were very nice um, to me, and um, I learned a lot. 
and I had always wanted to get back to Spanish, mm -hmm. but I, you yeah, know, I mean, I was a single parent and a lawyer yeah. and a da da da. You know how life yeah. goes, you yeah, know. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, oh, really? I'm going to go to Spain for you know two months and pick up Spanish again. Yeah, that's and, nice. That's and a nice so, story. <laughs> and you're happy you with know, that. <laughs> yeah. I have had the best time, and you know, my experience in Spain was Madrid. In places around Madrid and then to the north. Okay, so you so never had the. You never I had, had not been to Andalusia. Okay, no, okay. and I love it. I okay. just love it. Did you have the chance to go to Sevilla, Cordoba? I've been to Sevilla, Cordoba, Gibraltar, Gibraltar. Um, uh, Nerja. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> There's a, a pueblo down there, Frigilana. Frigiliana. I, I could live wonder. there in another life. Yeah, me yeah. too. Me too. Yeah. It's true. It's a nice oh, place. Oh, what yeah. a nice place. You have place. the beach and you have everything. It's, yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. And so I had the greatest time. I'm happy. Yeah, it's I'm been happy. wonderful.